In this video, our learning objective is to define and discuss the uh, revenue recognition principle, which you're all familiar with, having already done some research on it and the matching principle. So we'll, we'll go back and we'll review and talk about the criteria that is used. And remember, there are two general criteria. And we'll look at how a typical business transaction satisfies the criteria, uh, a, a typical point of sale, I should say, uh, when a product is delivered and a customer either agrees to pay for it or does pay for it, how that satisfies the revenue recognition principle. In later videos, we're going to look at situations where uh, we're going to use alternate methods uh, rather than the traditional point of sale revenue recognition. The definition of revenues uh, comes from the concepts of financial accounting put out by FASB and is defined in concepts number six, and here is the definition from the concepts. Revenues are inflows, that is cash that is being received. The cash inflow is cash you are receiving or collecting, or other enhancements of assets. Well, that means an increase in assets, an enhancement will increase an asset, and the asset we are talking about here typically is accounts receivable. So if we have a cash inflow, our asset account that will increase at the time of the revenue recognition will be cash. Otherwise, more than likely, it's going to be accounts receivable. Now, there is a possibility that there could be barter arrangements where a uh, one, at, one good is exchanged for another good, or a good is exchanged for a service, and vice versa. But these are uh, extremely rare. Uh, the settlement of a liability, which is talked about in the concept, uh, would occur that if a uh, company owes another entity uh, money, uh, say an accounts payable for uh, services or goods that were provided, well, that company would satisfy the liabilities by providing goods or services to the other entity, therefore not paying the debt with cash, but by the delivery of goods and services. These are extremely rare. For the most part, revenue will be recognized when Two things occur, and these were defined in concepts number five, where the revenue recognition principle is first laid out. The first criteria is that the sale will result in a realized or realizable exchange of cash. A revenue is realized when cash is received for it at the time of delivery, or it is realizable when a customer agrees to pay an amount in the future, and we believe there is going to be no issue on the collectability. The other criteria is that it is earned, and that means that the seller, who is recognizing the revenue, has fulfilled their end of the bargain. And here you'll see in concept number five, a little more in-depth explanation. Concepts number five was integrated into the FASB code in the topic for revenue recognition 
and this is from 605 1025 and you can see the criteria is spelled out here and they here reference concepts number five so we will recognize revenue when the earnings process is complete or virtually complete and there is reasonable certainty of collection for your typical business transaction say for a retailer the revenue recognition principle is fulfilled once a customer comes up to a cash register presents an item cash the cashier rings it up and accepts either cash or a credit card in today's retail world very few stores run their own accounts receivable so the transaction involving the credit card is in fact like cash and accounted for it such so at the time that either cash or credit a credit card is is received revenue will be recognized if this is a business to business situation and the buyer has a house account that allows them to purchase on account with with an agreement to pay within a short period such as 30 days well the asset that would be recognized at that point of sale would of course be accounts receivable now revenue is a very tricky area uh, in in many complex business situations that are more than just a customer presenting a good at a checkout counter and it has been one of the most abused areas of accounting because as we saw when we looked at how users use the income statement and particularly how they assess revenue because of its important to the users companies in the past unfortunately have manipulated revenue and even where there is not out and out manipulation there are very very complex business arrangements uh, that are often entered into and for publicly traded companies they often seek guidance from the Securities and Exchange Commission the Securities and Exchange Commission has a staff of accountants whose job it is is to look at the facts of a situation and render an opinion one such set of opinions was put out in what is called a staff bulletin and this bulletin uh, enhanced the revenue recognition principle in that it took very uh, a large number of different questions that the SEC had uh, received and categorized them and as you can see here there are four general criteria that the bulletin points to the first one says that there is clear evidence that an arrangement exists there are terms and agreements so that the seller fully understands when the earnings process is complete and these milestones for completion can be measured and that would allow for recognition if there is a very open-ended agreement with no set deliverables or milestones then revenue uh, will not be able to be recognized uh, as goods or services are performed but will have to be delayed until a an agreement is uh, negotiated uh, the, the other area that uh, is different than the typical uh, well, uh, the criteria that is spelled out in the revenue uh, recognition principle uh, is that the seller's price is fixed and can be determined so actually number one and three are enhancements uh, number two uh, just points out that uh, when in doubt the earnings process is completed when delivery has been made and again realized or realizable that collection is reasonably assured let's go over to the code 
and down at the end of the section we were looking at, we'll see that there is a cross-link to uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission. And, for example, we can go down here um, and look at uh, evidence of an agreement. And the Securities and Exchange information it is not an alternate to GAAP. Instead, it is interpretations of GAAP. So you can see in here, uh, there's a little background on the literature and a general discussion. And it's going to very much mirror the GAAP definition of the revenue recognition principle. A little bit later that on, you'll see that there's a set of facts that have been presented to the SECs. Uh, accounting staff, and they look at the facts, they isolate the accounting uh, question, and then give a response. And there are uh, quite a number of these situations spelled out that provide guidance. Uh, these SEC bulletins are authoritative and can be used in accounting research. So again, typically, we're going to measure and recognize revenue at the delivery of goods and services. And we have uh, used uh, the journal entries that do this on a regular basis. We will be looking into situations where uh, the recognition will have to be delayed till after delivery. <laughs> and in another video, we'll be looking at long-term contracts where GAAP allows for revenue to be recognized prior to the completion of a long-term construction project. So again, the general rule is that the revenue recognition principle is satisfied when a customer accepts goods and services and either pays for it on the spot or agrees to pay for it and collection is reasonably assured. Here's a little analysis of Walmart's revenue policy. For the great bulk of Walmart sales, revenue is going to be recognized at the point of sale, at the cash register. And it doesn't matter whether the customer presents cash or a credit card, even a Walmart credit card, because the customer does not have an account with Walmart. Walmart credit cards are typically issued by either GE Money or another uh, banking institution. There are some unusual arrangements. Uh, Christmas is coming up, and people hear about layaway plans, or you're probably familiar with a layaway plan where you put money a little bit at a time uh, uh, as a deposit on an item. Well, Walmart recognizes the revenue when all the payments have been made, whether or not the customer has come into the store and picked up and taken delivery. Well. This makes perfect sense. It's very rare that a customer is going to pay for an item, particularly an expensive item like, say, a TV, and not come in and pick it up. But they may you know, have short-term uh, needs where they would delay pickup to closer to an event like Christmas. So Walmart will recognize the revenue even though maybe in some cases the customer hasn't taken away the product. Shopping cart cards in of themselves when you buy a Walmart shopping card is not the end all. It's not what you're looking to buy. Uh, instead, Walmart will recognize revenue associated with the cards when the cards are used for redemption of merchandise. If you're familiar with Sam's Club, the big warehouse store that Walmart runs, there is a membership fee. And the membership fee covers a 12-month period. Well, Walmart does not recognize all of that fee when it is collected. When it is collected, 
it has not yet been earned. So we have an earned revenue, which we remember is a liability. And as time passes, Walmart can reduce down the unearned revenue liability and recognize the membership revenue. Walmart also has arrangements with suppliers. Walmart is a powerful retailer, so companies want to do business with Walmart. Uh, if Walmart sells over X number of units of an item, they may receive certain discounts and allowances. Well, these will not generate cash. Instead, they'll be used to reduce down the accounts payable that, say, Walmart has with Procter & Gamble. So Walmart treats these allowances as a discount, as discounts as a reduction uh, in inventory and then ultimately cost of goods sold. Other times, Walmart will receive cash uh, for promoting products, product placement in the stores, running advertising, and they will receive a, a cash payment from their suppliers. Other times they'll be reimbursed for certain expenses, again in cash, and Walmart treats these as revenue and recognizes them when they are earned, and they would recognize uh, promotional revenue uh, as a credit, and the debit, of course, would be the accounts receivable. They expect their, uh, their vendors to pay them, so they'll go ahead and recognize that revenue. There are sometimes uh, arrangements where there are three parties involved in a sales transaction, a buyer, a seller, and then a middle person. If the seller, such as a manufacturer, does not sell directly, uh, but instead puts a buyer together with a seller's product, but does not take delivery from the seller, then we have what's called a consignment sale. If title does not pass from the seller to the agent, then the seller has to delay revenue recognition until the agent sells the merchandise to an outside party. This even occurs when the physical merchandise itself has been shipped from the seller to the agent. If the agent does not take possession of the goods, then revenue cannot well, not just take possession, excuse me, does not take title, does not have risk of loss, then revenue cannot be recognized. And that's our look at the revenue recognition principle. In our next video, we're going to look at what happens when collection is in doubt.